If you're not waking up so early you want to cry, well, you're missing out. The first rule for going for an unforgettable drive in the very congested United Kingdom is to get up before sunrise. The objective is to get to your chosen road just as the sun is coming up and when everybody else is still snoozing away in bed. When you've got the road to yourself, it really doesn't matter what car you're driving. Last time out in Rise and Drive, we used a Mercedes SLS AMG Black Series. But this morning, we're keeping it real. Well, sort of. I mean, this BMW 1 Series M Coupe, it's got four seats, it's got a big boot. It's worth only 10% of what that SLS AMG Black Series is worth. So yeah, keeping it real. And this morning, we're on Exmoor in Somerset, beautiful Exmoor, which always looks stunning. But when the sun is just popping up, it looks extra special. And the roads around here are superb too. Lumpy, bumpy, twisty, challenging roads, a real test for any car. And at this time in the morning, they're deserted. The One Series M Coupe arrived in 2011. That was its official name, but you'll know it as the One M. There were only 450 right-hand drive cars, although globally, more than 6,000 were built. It cost almost £40,000 when it was new. Nowadays, the cheapest, highest mileage examples start at around £35,000. But if you want a really tidy car with sensible miles, you'll be paying more today than you would have done for a brand new car. So what's this thing actually like to drive? It's so exciting, it's so fun. It's a kind of old school sports car driving experience and you know that you're in a performance car because the clutch pedal has got some weight to it. It's a fairly firm ride. The steering is actually fairly heavy, but when you get going, my word, it all comes to you and it's just such an exciting thing to drive. It's amazing how quickly attitudes and expectations can change around cars because when it was new back in 2011, this car was criticised by some for having slightly numb steering, slightly dull steering. But compared to the electric power assisted steering systems we have now, remember this car has got hydraulic steering, it's just so much more detailed, so much more communicative, and it has none of that horrible, gloopy, detached sensation you get from E-Pass. That means you position the car with confidence and have a good sense of what the front axle is up to. And front end grip is massive. The 1M seems to turn into a corner at more or less whatever speed you choose. And then the car's beautifully balanced in corners as well. That's where its cross-country pace comes from. It's just got so much grip. And actually, it's got really good traction as well. To make the thing step out of line, to make it slide a little bit, you're working really hard. And that firm ride, actually, once you get up to speed, the suspension starts working beautifully. Some of these roads are really tricky, really bumpy. And you can feel that, you do feel it. But the suspension works so hard, you can feel each spring bounding up and down like this to keep the lumps and bumps in the road out of the body so the body stays quite calm. Actually, the damping, the quality of the suspension is very high, very high indeed. So you've got good steering, great balance, really good body control, good pliancy. All things considered, it's just a beautifully set up chassis, but it's playful as well. There's M Dynamic mode, which allows you just a little bit of slip. And then with the systems off, you can chuck the car around and then it's just so playful the throttle response is basically good it is good but there is still a fractional delay just while the turbos wake up and start boosting so in the middle of a corner you'll put your foot down nothing will happen for a fraction of a second and then bang you get a big load of torque igniting the rear tires and the car steps out of line and in sport mode which i'm in now through this button just here you get slightly sharper throttle response actually it's just a new throttle map which just makes the throttle feel much more responsive more urgent the engine is a firecracker I can't believe any of us ever bemoaned this car having a turbocharged engine because once you drive it you realize it's so well suited because the car's such a thuggish yobbish kind of thing so to have a big wedge of torque 
under your right foot. It just makes sense. What I wasn't expecting was the sheer force of the acceleration. The 1M feels so fast. In second gear, it's explosively quick, and in third and fourth, it just keeps on pulling. It's actually alarmingly quick, this car. The numbers aren't massive, but the way it sprints down a road, and it's a fizzy, energetic kind of turbo engine as well. It doesn't seem to wilt right at the top end. Manual gearbox, it's a lovely shift actually. BMW manual shifts aren't always great, but this one is just about spot on. Because of the car's very short wheelbase and very wide track, it's almost square, this thing. It can be quite edgy, it can be snappy when you're playing about with it right at the limit of grip. And that, combined with all that torque, it does mean that the car can sometimes try to get away from you if you're not really on your game. But if you're on top of it, it's just so playful, so much fun to fling about. I've read so much about the 1M's brakes that they're made of chocolate not up to the task. Actually, to me, they feel okay. On track, yeah, they'll begin to fade and maybe on a quick downhill run in hot ambient conditions as well. But on a flowing road, if you protect them just a little bit, they're fine. So it all adds up to a properly thrilling, engaging, exciting driving experience. Yeah, it's a cracking car, this little 1M. I'd heard good things. This is the first time, really, that I've had a properly good go. So, there we go. A special little car, this 1M. I think we should pull over, have a cup of tea, and have a look at some of the details. Check it out, look, I've upgraded my tea flask. I've got a proper one now. And it actually keeps my tea warm all morning, 18 hours, it says. That's much longer than I need, but it does mean that now, once I've finished driving up and down, I can stop and have a proper warm cup of tea while we talk about the car. Now, back to the car. Now, lots of people said, when it was new back in 2007, that the 1M was quite ugly, and actually I fear I might have been among them. I was wrong. Eight years later, well, there's something of the ugly duckling about this car, isn't there? Because in that time, it's grown and developed into a beautiful white, well, not a swan, but a pugnacious, angry little sports coupe. I think it looks fantastic. It's all about the wider tracks. 70 mil wider at the front, 50 mil wider at the rear and with those swollen arches stretched over to cover the wheels and tires, the stance is spot on, particularly on those 19 inch M3 CSL style rims. Yeah, overall, it's a cracking looking car. It started out in life as a proper skunk works project. Originally, the suits at BMW were not interested in an M version of the one series coupe, but the engineers, they saw the potential. They wanted to make it happen. So in their spare time over weekends, they designed and developed this car. They raided the parts bin, the M parts bin for this car. They took the diff and most of the rear suspension from the E92 M3 and bolted it onto this car. The brakes as well are from the E92 M3. Now the engine, let's have a proper look at the engine because it's not that special. It's the N54 twin turbo, three litre, straight six. Now, it's the same engine that you'll find in an E90 335i in the Z4 of an era, so it's not a proper M car engine. Now, when this car was new, we all sort of moaned about that, didn't we? But nowadays, ask owners what they think of that, and they'll tell you it's a very good thing indeed, because if something goes wrong, it's not expensive to replace. You can actually swap out the entire engine for not much money at all. If this was a proper M engine, a high revving, normally aspirated engine, perhaps the V8 or the V10, it would cost a fortune if anything went wrong. 340 horsepower, 369 pounds foot of torque. And while it might not be a really evocative high revving engine, all that torque, all that muscle, just defines the way this car drives. And it's a properly quick little car as well. Not to 62, 4.9 seconds, 155 miles per hour flat out, limited. This engine has got a lighter flywheel as well, just so you get slightly zippier responses. Now, this car was so controversial at the time because it was only the second turbocharged BMW M car, the first being the X6M, which 
wasn't really a proper M car, was it? So when this car came along, we all thought, oh, what have they done? But now that all M cars are turbocharged, it just makes perfect sense. I think as much as anything, this car demonstrates how quickly the car industry evolves and how rapidly the prevailing technologies change because it's got that hydraulic steering, that textural grainy feel. And it's also got quite an old school industrial kind of turbo engine. So something like an M2 competition has got a very clean and crisp engine. This is a slightly old school, gritty, snorty engine with a really exciting power delivery. So it feels very different to a brand new car, but it actually belongs to this very decade. It's not an old car at all. Let's have a quick poke around the interior. Now, the cabin is actually quite workmanlike. It's very standard one series in here. There are a few touches. So we've got some suede trim across the binnacle here and across the dash and on the door cards here as well. That's quite nice with orange stitching. So you know you're in something more than just the normal one series. It's eight years old now, this car, but the fit and finish, the quality, it all still feels quite good to me. Seating position, you get over it when you're driving, when you're concentrating on other things. But when you're just sat here, the seat feels an inch, two inches too high. That's a shame, really. You'd like to be just lower a little bit more. But generally, the seating position is very good. A little plaque here, M badge, one of 450. That means 450 right-hand drive cars. In fact, overall, there are several thousand BMW 1Ms kicking about. It's not really that rare car in overall terms. Here, this is where you find the M button just subtly hidden away with the stereo controls on the steering wheel. Press that once, you get sport mode, and that gives you that sharper, more immediate, more responsive throttle map. And then up here, you've got the traction control. One press, and you get M dynamic mode, which just allows a little bit of slip, just so you can enjoy the balance of the car in safety. Hold it down, and the systems are gone entirely. You're on your own. Yeah, it's a, a good workmanlike cab in this, but also space for adults in the back, a really good size boot. It's a properly practical car, this. I think this 1M actually does it all. Maybe that's one of the reasons why this 1M is so in demand today. If you want a good car with reasonable miles, you're going to pay more today than you would have done when the car was brand new. That's partly because there are only 450 of them in the UK in right-hand drive. But I think the real reason this car is in such demand is because it's so much fun to drive. It's such an exciting, distinctive, characterful kind of thing. All things considered then, it's exactly the sort of car you would wake up at 4.30 in the morning to drive. So what car should we be revisiting next time out on Rise and Drive? Please comment below with your suggestions and hit that like button. Remember also to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thank you for watching.